I have on the desk here two pieces of red oak. One featureless and the other one with swirly grain around this knot hole which uh, shows some uh, pattern in it. Both of these boards are plain sawn. You can see it on the end grain that the growth rings in the wood uh, go in a concentric uh, concentric circles and uh, and the center of the tree was somewhere here the pith of the tree same on this board and although the grain is a little more wavy around here it's also plain sawn so before we go into the features of the wood this is red oak but technically this wood belongs to the red oak group okay what's the difference there is the species red oak Quercus rubra and these boards might belong to it but there's another dozen species based on wood alone they cannot really be separated okay you need a microscope and uh, and you need a DNA analysis but that's not happening so based on just visual features on the wood and slight magnification that's those are the visual clues that we're gonna go with and uh, this is about the red oak group I have a dozen species or so that belong to the red oak group I'm gonna post their uh, English and Latin names some have different more than one English names depending on where you live it might be the wood might be uh, known under different names and this red oak might be different from this red oak the floor is made of this is also red oak this is also red oak meaning that they belong to the red oak group the exact species of the wood is unknown but it's red oak group for sure so let's get started with the visible features this side on the board is uh, has three coats of varnish on it and this one is sanded planed and sanded same here when the boards are sanded what's uh, immediately apparent is that it smells like smells like red oak smells like cardboard that's how I describe the smell you might have different adjectives there inserted whatever I'm gonna go with smells like cardboard the um, the wood otherwise has this yellowish brown color okay I can move around a little bit for different lighting it's got this cardboard brown whatever yellowish brown color now the the uh, green on the surface is uh, not particularly any anything special you know it's a uh, wavy there and and it's uh, uh, and you got these cathedrals I call these cathedrals here on this side because uh, that's how green looks like on plain cut and I don't have Corazon lumber but the uh, green looks different on that one so the features about this green is that Red oak belongs to the open gr ring, sorry, ring porous group of woods, and its grain is open. It's open on the surface, and it's open on end grain. And I'll show you what's open. So I'm going to put you down here on the desk, a little closer. Oops, a little closer to the end grain, and I'm going to point at the growth rings. You can see the pores on the wood now. You can see that the growth rings have holes in them, visible clear holes. Especially if it's not clogged up with sawdust, you can see the holes in it. And if you have a red oak dowel, you can blow air through these pores. Okay? So what this means in terms of durability of red oak it's only for interior trim only it's not resistant to rot not resistant to mildew it's susceptible to decay 
because it's not only belonging to the ring porous group of woods, but it's rings, but it's pores, it's vessel elements in the spring wood are large. Okay, you can blow air through them in a dowel. Seriously. So, that means that it's really, really not resistant to the elements. Moisture, okay? It's a bed idea for a bathroom. In other words, where or places where there is high amounts of moisture. The open grain feature continues on the surface and where you see these darker lines you can see that this growth ring there and there and continues on the surface okay and same same here that ends there and continues on the surface and so if we look at some of the grain that is cut on the surface that's exactly what you see it looks like it's torn but it's not torn up here with this little magnifying lens there it's not the grain is not torn but the vessel elements are cut up lengthwise and the vessel elements become instead of pipes or tubes they become open channels and you can see into those channels now dirt gets stuck into these vessel elements into these channels where we can pick another spot seriously anywhere you can see it's not ascending fault or deficiency those are the vessel elements that are cut cut lengthwise now okay you cannot send it enough to make it any smoother so it's catching a bit and it's coarse a bit and uh, yeah if it's uh, if it's unvarnished it's gonna be packing it's gonna be packed with dirt and it's gonna be really ugly in no time you can see this feature of the open grain or porous grain uh, cut this way on uh, plain cut surfaces so that's how that looks like okay that's uh, that's one feature I wanted to point out. The other one is the rays on this one. Oh, of course when, sorry, before we get to the rays, of course when it's varnished, let me just try to find good light. Here, where grain would be open, now it's, all you see is maybe dimples in the varnish, if, if anything at all, because the varnish, three coats of varnish, totally fills the spots where, there, let's see, Let's see there. Yeah, you can. You can. Yeah, you can see some dimples there. The varnish fills these vessel elements and seals them in. Let's see if we can make it sharp. There we go. Yeah, all you see is just dimples left. Okay. So, the other feature for red oak is uh, its rays. Okay, the rays run uh, or radiate from the pith of the tree which is the center of the tree somewhere here uh, radially out like spokes on a wheel on this board you can see the rays white on the end grain like so okay and uh, it's on a varnished end the other end is not varnished it's just plain and on this one the rays appear to be dark brown instead of white all right so those are the rays you can follow the rays to the edge and the rays continue on the edge there that one there also on the same on the other side if I flip this one around let's see let's pick one yeah how about this one there, I know my finger is thick, but there's that one and it continues as a white uh, line on the end grain and it becomes a ray fleck on the surface there. Same for each and every one. That one continues down there. That one continues down there. That little bit continues down there. That's a longer continues down there. Okay. And on the surface, this is how the rays 
look like all of these short streaks dark brown dark brown streaks on a yellowish light brown wood okay all of these lines running this way all of these are rays the rays carry nutrient from the pith of the tree radially out that's uh, that's what they do in terms of botany you can see rays appearing a little differently on edge grain there some of them could look like smears of ray of ray yeah let me see yeah a little bit here they they have uh, this smeary appearance all right so that's how rays look like on the unsanded side they are also obvious and prominent okay now last thing to tell red oak from white oak and and again red oak group from white oak group the red oak group has open vessel elements open grain especially visible at the end because on the face you can't really tell so you don't have to look at the end grain and you're gonna have to maybe get a magnifying glass and you're gonna have to have a clean end grain that's not clogged with sawdust okay so big open pores for red oak and uh, on uh, white oak you're gonna see membranes cross membranes uh, on the end grain of, of white oak okay and as well uh, these the second uh, botanic or anatomical feature is um, the length of these rays they are barely longer than half an inch half an inch would be 12 millimeters they are short shorter than my fingers width on white oak they are really really longer than one inch like super long and barely barely shorter than an inch okay so this one is red oak one of the species in the red oak group that's how you can uh, tell them apart from other woods or that's how you can spot something in the red oak group you can see the grain of the wood here uh, the growth rings going this way this is the spring wood in it and if you follow it you can see how it looks like when it's saturated with dirt that's packed full into the larger vessel elements the spring wood that's cut lengthwise and is now open and exposed and that's how it looks like when it's that's how it looks like when it's dirty this is just dirty here but this is unwashable dirt on the inside because it just hasn't been varnished and it just it just looks like so there so that's how red oak works